Good morning, everyone. My name is Shaime, and today, oops, I'll talk about, uh, I'll, let you, I'll tell you know how to use a tube to impersonate people and break speaker identification models. So, our voices are distinct. It's part of who we are. When we hear the voice of someone we know or of a celebrity, we can tell who that person is, even without seeing them and even if they speak a different language. And it becomes intuitive to use voice as a biometric to identify people at, at scale. This technology is called speaker identification. The current technology works as follows. It starts by giving a speech recording of someone. The speech is first pre-processed to extract relevant features to the voice of the speaker. And then a neural network maps those features to an embedding space to create something called voice print in an analogy to our fingerprint, it identifies the speaker. And then this voice print can be used uh, to identify one person out of a list of identities. The speaker identification technology has been deployed in many applications we interact with in our daily life. For example, on speaker assistants like Siri, if you have one, Siri only responds to commands coming from the device owner. It learns that by uh, learning their voice print. But most critically, in the application of phone banking, my bank, for example, each time I call the customer service, it asks me to enroll my voice print to be used for authentication. So um, when the bank, um, so it's used in banks um, to identify and authenticate customers. So banks like HSBC and Chase, among a lot of other banks, advertise this technology to be as secure as a voice, uh, a speak, uh, sorry, as secure as a fingerprint, and even more secure than a password. But is it really? We all have seen many deepfake uh, audios and even videos on social media platforms, and fraudsters have seen them too. For example, those two incidents, uh, fraudsters have used technology, AI technology, to impersonate um, high-profile customers and steal millions of dollars from their bank. And by the way, those two incidents happened four or two and four years ago. So imagine what, what can happen with the current technology. So to secure speaker identification against such attacks, the de facto security has become to add one more component to the pipeline, a liveness detection system. As its name indicates, it detects whether this voice sample comes from a living human being or from a machine by analyzing the acoustic features. And the fundamental assumption of this security measure is that voice is authentic if it comes from a human being. Again, on HSBC, they state that the technology can detect if someone is playing a recording to impersonate the customer and that the speaker identification technology they deploy is secure against such attack. So now we ask the important question, how to break that assumption? Can we break it? What if there is an attack that is not synthetic, not digital? An attack that can reshape one's voice to sound like another, but still like hold the natural feature in it. And our answer to that is to use an analog acoustic filter. <clears throat> the acoustic filter applies a natural transformation on someone's voice, like Alice, to sound like Bob. But still, it's a human voice, it's not synthetic. There is no digital component in it. And for that, we present our attack mystique that uses the simplest and cheapest acoustic filter ever, a tube. So tube, a simple, yeah, <laughs> a simple plastic or even um, cardboard tube is basically a resonator. If we manage to design the dimensions of the tube, it can change the adversary's voice to sound like any victim in the eyes of machine learning or speaker identification models. And by default, it bypasses the liveness detection because the voice is still live. Let's see it in action. So Leah wants to break into a special event for friends cast. 
And the, the, the event is hosted at the Wisconsin Privacy Lab. Yeah, hopes and dreams. So Leah is obsessed with Phoebe, and she thinks she can impersonate her. Let's see if she can break in. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding? Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? <laughs> okay, so the question now is why it works and how? How can a tube impersonate another person's voice? So I will show here the intuitive explanation and the mathematical one is in the paper. So the human vocal system consists of two main parts. The first one is uh, the vocal track, sorry, the vocal cords, which generates the vibrations, which is called also fundamental frequency. And then the vocal tract, which is basically the throat and mouth cavity, which shapes that vibration into the voice we hear and identify people with. So actually in theory, for decades, the vocal tract has been modeled by people who, was, who study acoustics as a sequence of tubes. So basically, in Mystique, the tube we are using is, can consider it as a controllable extension of the vocal tract, it's as if it's an external throat that you can design and um, optimize to match another person's voice. Okay, so now I will show you how we implemented Mystique, how we did it in reality and the measurements that work over the air for real participants. So we had a lot of unsuccessful tries to list a few, those are some images of our unsuccessful uh, attempts to build that attack. And the main challenges were that the, <clears throat> the background acoustic interference. And the second one was that we wanted a directional source of sound to test the system at scale. So the one that worked, first we had to build a small acoustic chamber, which is the box shown in the image here. That box has absorbers, sound absorbers inside of it to eliminate interference. And we used a smartphone for playing audio to again test the, the system at scale. And this is how a human would use it. We evaluated Mystique at scale using conventional uh, celebrity recordings data set. And also we ran a human evaluation we got some participants to help us do the evaluation. And finally, we evaluated Mystique against popular liveness detection models. And for the sake of time, I will only talk about the liveness evaluation and the liveness detection. Sorry, the live human participants and the liveness detection. So we invited 14 participants. Eight of them were male and six female. Um, we ran Mystique on their voice samples to impersonate 160 celebrities each. So each participant attempted to impersonate 160. And that table shows the success rate of Mystique over the air in reality um, by like inviting the participants again to use the tubes that we designed for them. And the success rate ranges from 35% to 75%. Next, we evaluated Mystique on three recent liveness detection systems. Actually, one of them was at Usenix 2021, with variations and also the underlying neural network. We tried different variants of the neural network. And this table shows the equal error rate and the false accept rate when the false reject rate is zero. And for both of them, lower is better. And as you see, the, all the models failed at detecting mystique samples as being fake. And that's because machine learning models in general, not just the speaker identification or the liveness detection, they fit to their training data. That's what they are designed for. And Mystique as an analog acoustic filter falls outside their training distribution. But it doesn't mean Mystique is undetectable. So in conclusion, speaker identification models make assumptions about the physical world. They expect certain noise distribution 
and certain echo distribution as well, and certain hardware to be used during capturing the audio. These assumptions don't always hold in real life. Adversaries can exploit those assumptions to implement attacks on machine learning services, and thus we need to be careful um, with relying on biometric authentication for secure applications. It's not as secure as it's advertised. And I'm ready for questions. <laughs>